The public really doesn't understand mathematics at all. Their impression of mathematics is, is, is totally, totally incorrect. I, I know where they get it from. They get it from the mathematics they learnt in the school. But that's basically the mathematics that I didn't like either. If you haven't gone beyond that school mathematics in any way, you're left with an impression of mathematics that's, that's just totally false. It's as if you wanted to sort of learn how to build your own houses. And ultimately you want to build things and you go along and they say, well, first of all, you've got to learn how to deal with timber and cut timber up and put timber together, how to lay bricks. So you spend some time learning how to put things together, which you'll need if you want to build a house. But that's not exciting, it's boring, it's the tools of the trade. The reason you do that is so you can then go out and say, well, I'm going to build a house, I'm going to design it, I'm going to make it beautiful. You're really then talking about architecture. To me, mathematics is the architecture part. The mathematics you learn in the elementary schools is the, the basic learning to lay bricks and brick walls and put timbers together. It's the tools of the trade. It's the same with cooking. If you never get beyond following a recipe and going into the details, and you never get to the point where you say, mm, I think I'll try a little bit of sageiness. And you become creative and you say, this might be good, this might be good. Put a bit of lemon in this. Then it gets exciting, it gets to be fun, and you're creative. The same is true in mathematics. If you don't get to the creative state, you'll never be excited. By the way, I never got to the creative state in cooking. So for me, cooking is largely a chore because I have to go <laughs> down to the basics and read the, the, the recipes. For many, many generations, being a mathematician was like learning to play in an orchestra. You had to learn to play the violin, the piano, the cello, the drums. The more instruments you could play, the better mathematicians. The instruments were arithmetic, algebra, trigonometry, geometry, calculus, probability theory, differential equations. All these things were like instruments in the orchestra. Since the beginning of the 90s, being a mathematician is like being the conductor of an orchestra. You don't have to play any of the instruments. You have to understand them. Mathematics is like that now. No one does any of the calculations in mathematics themselves anymore. Machines do that. When you're a mathematician today, you're conducting this wonderful orchestra of instruments. You simply have to be creative and say, I want to be able to do this. OK, well, this needs something called calculus. This needs something called trigonometry. Oh, there's this trigonometry package on my computer. There's this calculus package. Let me find out enough about those packages to bring them together and do something. You have to choose uh, movies, music, linguistics in order to share the beauty of math yeah. and in order to explain to people the math that is hidden in our everyday lives. I think that you have a theory about how maths can help better understand Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, there's been one or two studies of Game of Thrones. There was one I did uh, a couple of years ago. There was a study, it was actually some undergraduate students at a college somewhere in the Midwest, where they took the, uh, the mathematics that's used to analyze terrorist cell networks. This is, this is heavy duty stuff. How do you analyze a terrorist cell so you can see who's the leader of the terrorist cell, uh, who the people involved are. And in fact, that's a way they can catch a lot of terrorists by just looking at networks and doing the analysis of the networks and they know the kind of patterns that, that terrorist cells have. And so the methods that we use to, to understand who are the key people? And it has to be done by looking at the, the mathematical patterns of the networks. Uh, some students in the United States about two or three years ago applied that to Game of Thrones and said, all of these characters are getting killed off. Who would it be very difficult to kill off without destroying the series? You know, who is the most important person in terms of networks? If you kill that person off, it wouldn't be Game of Thrones. It would be games of, lots of Games of Thrones. And they did the analysis and they came up and they said, this is the person who cannot be killed off. I won't say who it is in case someone hasn't watched <laughs> the, the series or not. But the interesting thing from my perspective was that this was a really fun, exciting and engaging way to make people aware of the kind of mathematics that has been done all over the world by, by security services to protect nations against terrorist attacks. Uh, it was developed for doing that kind of thing. It can, that, those techniques can be used for all kinds of things like online sales and so forth. But you can apply them to things like TV series. It shows that mathematics really can apply everywhere. If you can apply it at the two extremes, life and death and entertainment, you can apply it anywhere in between. Mm -hmm.